Good afternoon, everybody, uneducated economist here. So I would like to thank Jeremy Knight for inviting me on to a show the other day. It was a great conversation. I will leave a link down in the description for you guys. Uh, Jeremy and Ian are real estate guys over in the Austin area, and they had some great insights to some of their experiences that they are, they are seeing there in Austin, and I shared some of the things that I am experiencing here uh, from the lumber yard over in Astoria, Oregon, and it was a great conversation between the two of us, three of us actually. And uh, I would appreciate it if you guys go and check out Jeremy's channel, give him a subscription, let him know how much you appreciate the conversation that we had and what you th think of it, give it a like, and yeah, let's talk a little bit more about real estate today. So uh, Builder Sentiment came out, it is dropping, dropping dramatically in just about every point that they, that they cover. And I tell you, it wasn't so much the that the sentiment is dropping. It's still above 50, which says that it is still positive. The only thing is, is that the buyer's traffic has dropped dramatically and like it is very low. They put this thing at like 37 on the scale and anything under 50 is negative. Anything above 50 is positive. So it is definitely in a negative when it comes to buyer traffic. And now this makes a lot of sense when you think about the home prices have just absolutely blown up. And when the interest rates rise, that makes that mortgage payment ever more difficult. So a lot of buyers are just like, you know, that's it, I'm done, I'm out of here, the prices are too high, and I can't afford these payments any longer. Well, what we have seen from that is a dramatic amount of homes that have dropped in price. But I have to think about it because it's not really like homes that are dropping in price that are now like cheaper than they once were. They've dropped in price from this unrealistically high number. So even I take my home, for example, that I have purchased and it's gone up like, I don't know, 15, 18%, something like that in the seven months that I have purchased it. Well, I could take a 10% drop in the current estimated value of this house and still not be underwater or still not even be under what I had purchased the house at. That would make it like a home that is still a profitable one, even with a 10% drop. And that's only been in the last seven months. So if you have purchased your home, say in the last seven months, you might be in a difficult position when you go to sell it. If you were looking to flip that house. Now, if you purchased it probably in the last year or more, then most likely you would be able to drop the price significantly, like 10% or more, and still not be under what it is that you had purchased that house for. That's how much they had moved up. Like if you're in the Idaho area, I hear that houses had moved up like 100% since the pandemic in some areas. Well, if it ran up 100% and since the time you purchased it, well, you can drop the price like 50% and still not be underwater on it. That's like pretty amazing to think. Home prices dropping 50%, like that's pretty unheard of. A lot of people would assume like 10, 15, even 20, maybe 25, 30% being really, really dramatic, but 50%, that's like unrealistically, an unrealistic drop, like that's, that's not gonna happen. The reason why you would find things that would drop that much is that there would be a bunch of toxic assets in the system. People who just simply could not afford that home to begin with, which there very well could be. However, the loaning practices that are taking place over the last decade, pretty much since the financial crisis, really aren't the same that they once were. So if you're going to take out a mortgage, you pretty much have to be a qualified buyer in order to get it. Well, that would leave people who are going to lose their job, like you're going to get laid off, you know, you're going to go on unemployment and just simply wouldn't be able to make your payment on your house. Well, I don't see that taking place anytime soon. There is plenty of jobs out there, still plenty of jobs out there, and service industry is begging for jobs. So it's not like you would have like this massive unemployment that would cause the foreclosures to kick into gear. Even if you did have a bunch of layoffs, zombie corporations getting their heads knocked off, lose, like laying off all those people, well, they would move over to the viable companies and even if they couldn't move over to the viable companies like the viable corporations to switch their jobs over, they could take service industry jobs and at least, you know, have some sort of survival income. Doesn't mean that they would be able to make their payments on it, but it's not like there would be a dramatic amount of unemployment that would cause the foreclosures to kick into gear. I mean, even if you had a like go from a high paying job to a service industry job, 
there's things that you can do so long as you have an income. You can take on roommates, you can, you know, take on a second service job. There's things that you can do in order to continue to make those payments. It would take like massive unemployment in order to kick the foreclosures to kick into gear. So let's think about it from another direction. Let's think about like how inventory builds would happen. If it's not gonna come from massive foreclosures because people are going underwater and they're not making their payments because of unemployment, well then there would have to be a major increase in inventory due to people who are just trying to sell their home, which is gonna be the case. We're starting to find that now. But I think about like how much are they gonna really drop the price of that home as opposed to just taking advantage of this incredibly hot housing market. So again, I have to look back at my house, right? I bought a house seven months ago, it's moved up like 15%. I can take a 10% drop on it, even if I was to try and sell my home now. So this would bring like the more inventory onto the market, but that may not be the case to drive it to the point that you would have a housing market crash you see like you might have a lot of people who put their houses out on the market and just sit on it like they might have a big inventory bill but be willing to wait like most of the time when a home would sit on the market they would sit on the market for days and months and even years waiting to sell that home the idea that you could put a house out there for sale and you get an offer on it within 20 minutes that's not realistic but yet the people think it is like they've grown accustomed to that so now a house goes on the market and they're like, oh my gosh, it sits for two weeks and we still haven't got an offer on it. Well, that's normal. Like that's a normal housing market. That's what you would expect. Even months going by without many people, you know, looking to buy that house. That would bring in multiple offers that would take people like, you know, the idea that they're going to like, you know, maybe try to negotiate onto a different price. Well, if you were just trying to take advantage of the hot, hot, hot housing market, and like get out now while the prices are hot and then buy in when it drops. How many people are willing to drop the price of that home? I mean, there might be a lot of people who are willing to sell their home, but not many people may be willing to drop it because they need to. They're just trying to take advantage of that hot housing market. So that's really not gonna bring a lot of inventory onto the market as far as cheap homes go, right? If, they aren't, if they're not laid off and they're not like, it's not like a payment issue that they're having. It's just more they just want the greed, the money out of it. Well, they may not have to sell their home. And even though the inventory is sitting on the market, they may not drop the price. So this is kind of where I'm getting at. They're taking advantage of the hot housing market. They're not being forced to sell. Not, not yet anyway. Okay, so let's think of another way. How is this inventory gonna build? Well, it would come from the builders, right? The builders are like taking advantage of the hot housing market and pumping out a lot of homes. But we're finding that that's not the case either because the builder sentiment is beginning to drop. And if the buyers, like the buyer traffic is really making them nervous, well then the home builders may not be so eager to try and add inventory to that market. So even from a home builder's like sentiment kind of attitude saying, okay, well, we want to build homes into this hot housing market, but yet we have traffic buyers coming down. Like we don't have as many people coming in looking for it. Well, if you're a builder who is just like, okay, well, I'm projecting on selling this home for this much, but by the time we actually complete it, if it's not going to sell for that much, how eager would you be to start new homes? You're probably not going to be very eager to start them. So there's a gap in production taking place right there. So think about that. If there is like a lot of people who are looking to sell their home for a, an elevated price, they don't need to sell their home, they just want to because they wanna take advantage of that hot price. Well, then that's probably not gonna drop the prices dramatically even though you have a big inventory build. And if people aren't getting laid off or the unemployment doesn't necessarily rise, then most likely the people are going to continue to make their payments even if they do lose their job like i said they could take on that service industry job or take on two and if the home builders are not adding more inventory to the market even if they did complete these homes you know that they have now there's going to be a gap in production as they are going to get nervous about trying to build new homes into a downturn in the housing market if that's what they perceive so I'm still not seeing where the housing market is going to crash. What I see is that housing market is probably going to return to something that is reasonably normal. And what I mean by reasonably normal is that you're gonna put a house out there, you're gonna take less price for it, you're gonna take on multiple like offers, there's going to be weeks or months even of it sitting on the market without an offer on it. 
those are the things that would be typical for a housing market. Once it gets worse than that, like you put out a house, like you put a house on the market for what you feel is a fair price today, not like the elevated hot housing market price, but just a normal price that would be something reasonable to today. And it sat there for six months and not one single person looked at it. That might be concerning, right? That would be the type of thing that you would be concerned about. But putting a house on the market and then not getting an offer or not getting an idea of somebody coming to look at that house in two weeks and that makes you nervous, that's not a that's not a normal housing market you're in, right? A normal housing market would have multiple offers and a, an extended time on the market. So these are the things that I've been like looking at as far as will or will not the housing market pop. That's what I'm gonna see. And, or that's what the things that I'm looking for, the unemployment to rise, looking for the people to go into foreclosures, not just like wanting to sell their house for a higher price, but being forced to sell their house. And then looking for the builders to add more inventory to the market. And without those things happening altogether, I just really feel that things are just gonna try to return back to a normal or something what would be reasonably normal-ish, all right? However, I wanna go back into Cantillon's essay. So that's what I have to say about the housing market. But I wanna talk about um, the essay because in Cantillon's essay, he really, he really breaks down some of, the, some of the ideas of new money coming into the system. And one of the things that he says in here is talking about rents. And he talks about when rents go up, that shows that there's an abundance of money in the system. I know, this is directly from the, from the essay. I know no better measure than the leases and rents of property owners to judge the abundance and scarcity of money in circulation. When land is leased at a high rates, it is a sign that there is plenty of money in the state. But when land has to be leased at much lower rates, it shows all, all it shows, uh, sorry guys, it shows other things being equal that money is scarce. Well, I think with all the jobs out there that are available, I think there's still plenty of money in the system. And that's pretty obvious. If there was less help wanted signs everywhere, that would be less money. Now, we may see that coming into the future, but as of right now, we're still waiting for that sign to take place. When you start seeing the rents coming down, we're going to know that that's going to be a major problem for the, for the home owners out there who have purchased homes with credit, expecting to get a rent from it, that won't cover their mortgages. That would create a situation in which people would wanna get out of that home as soon as possible because now it's costing those owners or the people who had taken out the mortgage for that, for that rental property, it's gonna be costing them money. And if that's the case, they will unload that thing right now. But as far as I can tell, rents are still incredibly elevated. When you have the hot jobs market that's still out there, this is not going to bring rents down. And as far as I can tell, that's not going to cause a major like selling of homes because the people who had taken out mortgages for rental properties would be going underwater on those mortgages. Does all that kind of make sense? So those are the things that I'm looking for. I'm not saying that there isn't going to be a major downturn in housing. I'm just saying that the information that's coming out today still doesn't indicate to me that we have a housing market pop. We have something that has gone from like stupid expensive going to normal and that is going to be very confusing for people over the next couple of years because everybody has gotten so accustomed to hot housing market being normal that's not normal what we are experiencing was not normal in the in the housing market what we could return to and may even pass it i mean that could happen but what we need to return to is normal and once we get to normal then we can start talking about popping of the housing market all right, I'm going to leave it at that. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.